next step is to take what we know about the variational theorem and see what we can do with it to uh, understand some problems where we can't truly solve the Schrodinger equation, but we can come pretty close. So remember, for the helium atom, we've seen how to write down Schrodinger's equation, and we've decided that we can't solve that Schrodinger equation on paper. It's got some kinetic energy in terms, some potential energy terms, but unfortunately, this electron-electron repulsion term makes it non-separable, uh, which makes it hard to solve. But we do know the variational theorem, so we can guess trial functions all day long, uh, vary the parameters in those trial functions, and make the variational energy as low as we can. And the lower we can get that variational energy, the better a, an approximation of the true wave function we've managed to get until we can get as close as we can to the, the true energy. So uh, let's start by trying to understand what we can use as a variational expression for the helium atom trial function. So if we think about what the helium atom looks like, so it's got a nucleus with charge 2. It's got an electron that lives somewhere in that, uh, about that nucleus. And it's got a second electron also, which I'll draw in a different color, that also occupies the region around that nucleus. So if we're going to make a naive guess about uh, what to use for that wave function, again, naive guess if we wish f in a wishful thinking sense ignore this electron-electron repulsion, we might guess that the first electron occupies a 1s orbital and the second electron also occupies a 1s orbital, pretty much like I've drawn here. Both of the electrons occupying spherical shells uh, around the nucleus, kind of ignoring each other as they would if they didn't have any Coulomb interaction between themselves. So that's what we could use as a, as a trial function. If we calculate the energy of that trial function, and remember, since we've solved Schrodinger's equation for the hydrogen atom, we know what those 1s wave functions look like. Those look something like e to the minus zr over some constant that we call the Bohr radius. So we know exactly what a 1s wave function looks like. We know what the product of two wave, uh, 1s wave functions looked like. We can plug those into the variational energy expression and do some integrals. Uh, that's a little bit of work, but it's not uh, tremendously difficult. But if we skip over the details of that calculation, I can tell you that what we get if we plug in this guess for the wave function uh, into the variational energy expression is we get minus 2.75 Hartree's. Uh, so as usual, when we can't solve Schrodinger's equation, we don't know whether that's a good answer or a bad answer. We know that it's bound to be higher than the true wave function, uh, true energy of the ground state wave function. We don't know how much higher or how much lower. A um, Couple things to say about this number. We can say, first of all, um, if we had only a single electron, remember for a hydrogen-like ion, if I only had one electron around the, the helium nucleus instead of two, the energy of the, of the ground state, the n equals 1 ground state, in atomic units was minus a half z squared over n squared Hartree's. So this, this can help just to give us uh, a sense of the magnitude of this number. If I had just one electron around the helium nucleus, the helium nucleus meaning nuclear charge of 2, and I'm solving for the ground state, so if I plug in n equals 1, so z squared is 4, divided by 2 is 2. So this would be uh, a total energy of negative 2 Hartree's for one electron around the helium nucleus. Helium has two electrons around the helium nucleus. If I have both electrons ignoring each other, just orbiting the helium nucleus without interacting with each other, each one would have an energy of minus 2, electro uh, minus two Hartree's. Uh, so if I, on this side of the board, draw a big energy ladder. So here's an energy of zero. That would be the energy of an electron not interacting with anything at all. An energy of minus four Hartree's would be the ener ener energy of two different electrons, each with negative two Hartree's. Two electrons totally ignoring each other, both orbiting the helium nucleus without paying attention to each other. So that would be the energy of uh, two non-interacting electrons 
around a helium nucleus. What we've discovered is that if I let those um, electrons interact, uh, if I, uh, but I guess that their wave function still looks like a 1s orbital, then let's see, this is 2, here's about 2.75. So this is the energy of uh, 1s times 1s. So my trial function, again, I've just guessed a function that I know is not right. I've guessed a function that's at least in the vicinity of, of uh, uh, the magnitude of energies I would be expecting. If they're not interacting, the energy is too low. If they are interacting, uh, but I guess the wrong wave function, we know the ground state energy is, is somewhere below this number, uh, lower energy than the one I've just guessed. So far, this hasn't yet used the full power of the variational approach. I've just guessed a function and calculated the energy. Where it gets a little more valuable is if I take this function and I allow some parameter in it to vary. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, uh, Instead of saying the wave function looks like e to the minus z times radius divided by a naught, I'm going to take the same idea, but instead of saying z must be equal to the nuclear charge, I'm going to say maybe that's not quite right because if there's uh, if this orange electron is closer to the nucleus than the green electron at any particular moment. The green electron isn't going to be as strongly attracted toward the nucleus uh, as it would if the electron weren't there. The negatively charged electron might screen the other electron from experiencing the full Coulomb attraction of the nucleus. So instead of using z equals 2 for the nuclear charge, and I should write z effective in this term as well, instead of requiring that z equals 2, I'm going to let z be my variational parameter. I'm going to allow the value of z to change, like lambda did when we considered the harmonic oscillator. So if I allow uh, the value of the nuclear charge to be my variational parameter, I can evaluate the uh, variational energy for this wave function. And what I find is to look up the specific. So z effective squared minus 27 eighths of z effective times a heart tree. Mm. Yes. So that's what I get for the energy of um, the variational function, the, the trial wave function, if I allow the nuclear charge to change. I then can look for the value of z effective that makes this as small as possible. And what I find is the value of z effective that minimizes this variational energy is 27 over 16, or about 1.7, 1.69. So what that tells us is the uh, trial wave function that gives me the lowest possible energy is one that doesn't have a nuclear charge of 2. It has a nuclear charge of about 15% lower, a nuclear charge of about 1.7. And what that means is my electrons, I get a better result for the wave function if I treat the electrons as if they're attracted to a nuclear charge uh, of, of size 1.7, because about 15% of the nuclear charge has been screened by the other electron. If I then take that particular value of uh, the nuclear charge, if I calculate the energy of my trial function when the effective charge is 27 sixteenths. What I find is this particular result, negative 729 over 256 Hartree's as the energy of that trial function. If I convert that to a decimal, that works out to be about minus 2.85. So notice a couple of things about that result. When I use an effective nuclear charge, that's the best value I can find. The energy has gone down. So if I insist on using the z equals 2 value, I get an energy of minus 2.75. If I allow the nuclear charge to be flexible and reduce it uh, to its optimum value, I get an energy that's lower. 2.85 Hartree. So we know 
that must be the, the case. I found the, the Z effective that gave me the lowest possible energy. I can't get the energy any lower than this number with this form of the wave function, even if I allow the, the nuclear charge to change. The next step um, is I can go to the lab and I can measure the experimental energy of the electrons in the helium atom. And that works out to be minus 2.9 Hartree's. So the way I can measure that energy is I can, I can measure the energy it takes to remove the first electron and then the energy it takes to remove the second electron. If I add those two energies together, I get 2.90 Hartree's. So the energy when they're bound to the helium atom is negative 2.90 Hartree's, 2.90 Hartree's lower than when the electrons are removed and far away from the helium atom. So that's an experiment that can certainly be done relatively easily. We can measure the ionization, the first and second ionization energies of a helium atom and discover that the, the true energy is 2.90 Hartree's. So this is the experimental result. So again, notice several things. As claimed by the variational theorem, the best I can do with a trial wave function that isn't quite right is still above the experimental energy. I can't get any better than the variational energy. This number is only lower than the variational energy because I completely ignored part of the uh, Schrodinger equation just to get a ballpark estimate. But if I actually use the, the correct Hamiltonian, I can't do any better than uh, the experimental energy. Also notice that we've been able to do pretty good even with what turns out to be kind of a, um, an approximate uh, uh, version of the wave function. We're able to cover recover roughly 95% of the true experimental energy, even with this uh, guess where I take two s orbitals surrounding a z equals 2 nucleus. If I use the power of the variational approach and allow the nuclear charge to be a variable instead of a constant, then I can do a little better and I can get to 98% of the correct experimental energy. That missing 2% that I can't get with the variational expression uh, in this case comes from Approx uh, or assumptions I've made in this form of the energy that aren't necessarily true. In fact, the true wave function isn't necessarily a spherically symmetric uh, uh, exponential function. And in fact, the true wave function is not a product of two different one electron functions. So if I want to do better than this 98% level, I'd have to come up with a more clever way of writing a wave function that doesn't uh, make those particular assumptions.